Basically, the punchline of Ehrenfest's theorem is that it tells you that expectation values of quantum operators, their averages, the average value of those observables, satisfy classical equations of motion. And this is an important concept because that's what you'd expect to be the case. Quantum fluctuations are supposed to be random fluctuations about the classical values. So the fact that their average would obey classical equations of motion is very intuitive and it's nice that you can prove that. There are two equations in Ehrenfest's theorem. One that says that the time derivative of the momentum expectation value is equal to the expectation value of minus the spatial derivative of the potential. So it's basically that the derivative of the momentum equals force in the normal classical sense. And this one I've derived in a previous video. The other equation in Ehrenfest's theorem tells you that m times the time derivative of the position expectation value equals the momentum expectation value. So it's basically p equals mv. And that's the one we're going to derive in this video. We're going to derive that equation of Ehrenfest's theorem. Much like the other equation, which I derived in a previous video, it's quite a satisfying derivation because the math isn't too complicated or long, but it's really pretty. The mathematical manipulations are quite elegant, and also the final product is a very elegant and intuitive. So it's really a fun thing to do. So here follows the math section. Ehrenfest's theorem consists of these two equations. I derived this one in a previous video. This video will be focused on deriving this. We remember that the expectation value of x can be written like that. So the goal is just to take m times the time derivative of it and see what we get. We should be able to reduce it down to the expectation value of the momentum operator. The first step is simply to bring this derivative in the integral, in which case it becomes a partial derivative, and then we can use the product rule on the wave functions we find there, and that gets us here. Then we can rewrite these time derivatives using the Schrodinger equation. So if we complex conjugate the Schrodinger equation, we get this. Then we can solve for the time derivatives for both the Schrodinger equation and its complex conjugate. If we insert these, we arrive immediately at this, and then we can multiply in these wave functions and get to here. We then see that the potential terms are the same but with opposite signs, so they cancel, and that gets us down here. The next thing we see we can do is we can pull out one of these derivatives. Now you may think, well, the product rule would ruin that because it would add extra terms beyond what's just here. But it turns out those terms are the same but with an opposite sign because these two terms have an opposite sign. So they end up canceling and therefore multiplying this through with that cancellation actually does return this. We can now integrate by parts recognizing that normalizability ensures that all boundary terms vanish. We can integrate by parts productively specifically by moving this partial derivative here over onto that x which then just differentiates it to 1 which gets us here really only at the cost of a minus sign which you've seen I've taken into account in both these expressions. We can then integrate by parts one more time to simplify this further. So if we look back at this term here, what we can do is we can move this x derivative at the cost of a minus sign on this term over to this psi instead of being on the psi star, and it makes it equal to this term, including the sign. Specifically, we get this, then they combine, and we cancel that half. We can pull this ih bar in, and we can keep the minus sign in there. We find this expression, but we see this is just a momentum operator and we find, well, that's just the formula for the expectation value of the momentum operator. So we arrive at p here. So therefore, we found this equation, one of the two equations in Ehrenfest's theorem. So now you've seen how to derive the other equation given to us by Ehrenfest's theorem. You've seen how to use the Schrodinger equation to productively replace the time derivatives with spatial derivatives in the potential term. You've seen how to manipulate that down partly with integration by parts and recognizing that you can ignore the boundary terms into a really nice, elegant result that ultimately confirms this part of Ehrenfest's theorem. I hope this video is useful to you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Dietrich out.